What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Phil Platocha, and today we're going to be comparing two Nike daily trainers and deciding which one is better for you, whether it's going to be the Nike Vimero 16 or the Nike React Infinity Run Fly Knit 3. Let's get into it. But before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're already subscribed and watching this content. Thanks so much, love you guys a lot. Specs for both shoes respectively right here. And we're going to kick it off with, I think, the senior of both shoes uh, by just a small margin in this case, which is the Vimero 16. And it's a shoe I've had a little bit longer in my lineup than the React Infinity 3. So, basic specs for this shoe, as you can probably already see, the shoe is running at about 10 ounces in size 8.5 which is like about 290 grams on average. And now in terms of stack heights, we do have a 33 millimeter heel and a 23 millimeter forefoot, which gives it this 10 millimeter offset, which is kind of a standard for some Nike racing shoes on the market, in addition to other carbon plated racing shoes from other brands as well. That 10 millimeter offset is really good, just to give you that more emphasized forefoot strike in my opinion. Uh, based on the technologies also involved as we're going to get to in a second definitely helps to have that as well so let's roll into that stuff now so with the foam uh discussion in regards we have two different types of foams in this shoe we do have this eva uh foam that nike's using in addition to zumax which is basically a lot more of a kind of a squishier a lot more of a violent more responsive foam used for faster paces in addition to that the shoe does have an air zoom pod in the shoe uh, in this forefoot area, which you can tell by this uh, piece of the shoe, I've worn it out pretty badly, but it is still active. It's not like popped or anything like that. It's just this uh, outsole is pretty worn out. So something to note on that side as well. Uh, in terms of the uppers, as you can see, we do have a bit of a busy upper with uh, some textile and mesh going on. The textile is kind of like a mid-level. It's not too thick, but it's also not too thin where the shoe uh, is totally breathable. It is actually kind of got a little bit of moisture retention in certain areas of the shoe as we'll get to. Uh, with the textile in mind, it's in the shoelace area. It's not too bad, but it's also worth considering that this is kind of in, at a risk point to start ripping if you're tying your shoes in a very strange way. In my case, I did have a scare for a moment that one of the textile pieces did rip, but in this case, it did not. I was specifically looking at this one right here where I thought there was a major rip, but I guess there wasn't. Um, other things to note, shoelaces are kind of running a little bit long, but you can always tuck them to the side if you need to. Not a big deal. We do have a heel guard, heel cup, heel hoof, whatever you want to call it. Good for keeping the heel locked down. Uh, that's just kind of really working out really well for Nike's daily trainers in this particular case. In terms of the heel collar, we do have a lot of plush, a lot of cushion. So you do have to kind of tie the shoe down pretty well to get the lock that you're looking for in this case. So now, moving into the newer of the two, which is the React Infinity Run Fly Knit 3. You can probably look at the shoe and say, hey, wow, look, Phil, it looks just like the React uh, 1 and 2, which you'd be probably correct to an extent with the 1 and the 3. The 2 is kind of uh, a little bit busier in my opinion, but nevertheless, that's not what we're comparing here. This shoe here runs at about 10.3 ounces, which is like 295, 296 grams on average. We do have a heel of about 34 millimeters and a forefoot of about 26 which gives it an 8 millimeter offset versus the 10 millimeter offset that we had in the Vimero 16. So the rides in terms of stack heights are very similar, but the offset does change how much midfoot to forefoot ratio you are using when you strike the ground. So something to be kind of considerate about when you're uh, basically selecting these shoes. Now, of course, we do have just a huge slab of React running across the shoe. That hasn't changed in the three generations of this shoe at this point in time. Uh, with the outsole, not a whole lot of wear. I'm still like kind of putting on the distance and just kind of playing around with it. But it does have a nostalgic feeling to the 2020 version of the Infinity React 1 in this case. So, good stuff to note there. Uh, in terms of, I would say, the upper, it seems like it's a lot thicker than it used to be pre in, uh, the, than like its previous models, which is kind of an interesting move by Nike. That would probably imply that if you do start like sweating in your feet or you start absorbing moisture in the shoe, it's going to retain in the shoe, which is kind of not what you're looking for. You want the shoe to be able to breathe, but you also want to find a fine balance between breathability and lockdown stability. So my guess here is that the shoe 
is definitely designed more for stability, recovery, and keeping your feet and your running gait as safe as possible. So I guess they put comfort above all else besides, you know, breathability and all that. So that's kind of what's going on. I guess this is a concern for uh, runners is this upper. In terms of the shoelaces, not a whole lot of material going on, but it, we, it does seem to be woven in with some string on the side that's keeping the shoes basically uh, locked down on your feet from those that, from at least that perspective. The shoe laces are kind of thick, but they're also running short. So something also to consider when you're tying your shoes in this particular case. Just, yeah, something I noticed as I was going along. In our heel collar area, not as much material as there was in the Infinity React 2 in my opinion, but we do still have, of course, this heel guard, which is, again, good for keeping the heel locked down and it's just nice and stable. Um, I like it and it's basically not causing me any sort of issues when I'm running in it thus far in terms of heel slippage or heels kind of moving from the side of this shoe in particular. So now we get into comparing and contrasting both of them in terms of differences and where we would best utilize them. So major differences, of course, are the stack heights where they're just barely different. Like it's literally just a heel difference where this one's 34 millimeters in the heel, this one's 36, which gives it this 10 millimeter offset with a 36, 26 and a 34, 26. Just something to note, first and foremost. Uh, foams, of course, between both shoes, very different where we have React running all the way across and we have EVA foam and ZoomX with an air zoom pod in the you know forefoot base of the shoe, which also gives it a lot more of a spring, but it's a little bit more unstable than something like the uh, React Infinity Run 3. So you're kind of trading off speed for stability and recovery pace for maybe an everyday pace. But there are some other caveats here as we get into them. So those are some of the major differences. The uppers, we can always just go into like all the different things that are different about the uppers, but for the most part, I would say they have their advantages and disadvantages depending on your conditions here. So now let's talk about the utility of both shoes here. So you would think to yourself like, hey Phil, I, want, I could definitely use both of these shoes for marathon running, can I? The short answer is yes, but I wanna break this down with a slight caveat here as well. So we'll start with the Vomero 16, right? So the Vomero we know is a shoe that has been advertised as a long distance everyday trainer, which is probably like 90% correct. I haven't put this on anything past an 11, 12 mile run quite yet, but I know there are people who have and they've enjoyed this shoe for the most part. So until I do it myself, it's hard to give kind of like that, uh, you know, consensus opinion, but I will say the shoe is definitely built to simulate more of your race, I guess, turnover style where you have this more, you know, uh, I would not necessarily responsive, but a much more violent, less stable foam with this air zoom pocket, which gives you more speed, but not nearly as fast as your uh, racing or everyday race or shoe, but it helps carry along your run with the speed that you may be looking for, in addition to having that extra weight for some stability and protection from the elements of your long run day. So. In my opinion, I would use the Vomero 16 in like a marathon training plan where most of my work is going to be endurance, not too much track speed or like intense speed workouts. So if I needed to do a recovery run after a track session or something along those lines, this shoe would just be perfect for it. It won't like beat up my feet too much. And yeah, if it was my only option, this is the way I would go with it. Now, as I kind of brought up earlier, like, hey, you can use the React Infinity Run Fly Knit 3 in a marathon training plan and I am currently in a marathon training plan and also utilizing this. But I think the shoe also has a bit of a caveat in terms of where you can also utilize it as well. So what I'm saying here is, let's say you're part of a 5K, 10K or even like half marathon training plan where you don't have nearly as much endurance work as you do like track or like speed workouts, something where you're just gonna be taking a massive pounding to the body on a more regular basis than something like a marathon training plan. I would use this as the daily trainer strictly because this shoe is designed to be more of that recovery type of shoe where if you have some sort of residual soreness after your track session, maybe you have like sore peroneal tendons or your feet hurt or you have some kind of like plantar fasciitis you're experiencing, it might be the case that using this shoe 
during your easy runs will help mitigate some of the soreness you are experiencing or help at least keep it down lower than it was previously if you were like running in a track spike or your everyday race or shoe. So my caveat here, of course, is that this is probably a good shoe that if the pendulum is swinging one way a lot with your speed workouts, this is a good shoe to bounce back to where it's not going to be probably perhaps nearly as fast as like something like the Vomero 16, but you're going to have a really comfortable, stable ride in this shoe regardless. And that's probably what you would be looking for after something like a massive speed workout anyways. So that's kind of where I would caveat both of these shoes is that in summary, this would be a good marathon everyday daily trainer in my opinion. And this would be good for a little bit more than just the marathon. It could be good for your faster racing training workouts, such as like the 5K, 10K, and even to half marathon. It's not to say you couldn't do this with the marathon at all. It's just, I think the Vomero 16 would do it just a little bit better as your daily trainer for that kind of you know situation. So I think I'm going to end the video here. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns that I may have not addressed in this video or would like a comparison of these shoes in a different, I guess, context, whether it's like what should, what type of training block should you use these in, but you want something other than like that, maybe like, hey, which one's better for triathlon or something along those lines, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to compare these shoes to other shoes I have in the lineup that I might not have already scheduled, throw them in there as well. I'm happy to do them as we get there. So I will leave the video here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.